Well hi everyone, welcome back to the farm. Today you join me in the farm office and I'm gonna give you an update on what's going on in the farm. So today on the farm it's about minus four. All of the taps and drinkers on the farm are frozen. It's just an absolute nightmare. We've been going out with IBC tanks, getting water, getting everything fed. The calves, I've just, I've just started to wean uh, from milk. So they've, they've been an absolute challenge this year. Uh, three months of just feeding them milk powder every day, doing it all by hand. We haven't got any machines to do it. And it's been a lot of hard work. But they're, they're now on to hard food. We have to buy the hard, the hard food in, as you will have seen in the content. That's of course a lot of work because we do that manually. Uh, we've got like buckets and just literally get the sacks out, get the feed out of the sacks and put it in buckets. So it's quite an old school way of feeding our calves. But it works and that is taking up a lot of time at the moment. Um, so I also decided as well today, I'm not only gonna give you guys a farm update, People's attention spans are getting shorter as well, I've noticed, because of TikTok. I've, I have got TikTok. We have got an Ollie's Farm TikTok account, but I have actually, on my phone, uh, I've deleted the TikTok app because I do think it's a waste of time. Um, so if you have TikTok, consider deleting it because I don't think it's helping society. Um, I'm, I might go on it now and then to upload something, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, that's what we've been up to at the moment. Uh, oh yeah, and also I bought some decorations for the tractors. Um, well, the, not, uh, I was gonna put some decorations on the 135 and also the 6R, we're gonna take it on a road run this year. So I bought some tinsel. I also managed to get, uh, which you'll see this year hopefully, I've ordered like a mini reindeer to put on the front of the 6R. And uh, obviously the joke is that it's, it's a small deer on a deer. So I'm hoping it will work and it will look quite funny. Um, when it's all done. And we're going to the Larling Angel tractor run, which we went to last year, if we can. Um, and then this year, we're also gonna go, hopefully, uh, to the Halston uh, tractor run as well, which is, in, which is uh, one I haven't been on yet. So we're gonna do two tractor runs, hopefully, this year. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to that. Um, what's up with demos at the moment? I've had some questions and messages about, um, and I've just made a note of this earlier on this week. There will probably be a thing of the past. Uh, I mean, new, tra new tractors, uh, with the climate goals, a lot of these corporations, like you've got New Holland, John Deere, Case IH, Fent, etc., uh, they all have you know engines in their tractors, and the companies who make the tractors, whether it's a tractor company or not, um, they have like climate goals now, and they can only make like so many tractors a year. And I think probably going into the future, it's, it's going to get more. There's going to be so many tractors built a year, and I think tra new tractors on farms are going to become more of a rare sight to see than ever before because of like. You know, things like uh, the subsidies being phased out, there's a lot of farmers out there, especially hill farmers, you've got farmers in the north, in the west country, even farmers in the arable areas, like where we are in Norfolk and Suffolk, struggling. Uh, a lot of farmers are struggling at the moment because of the costs of everything. And just small family farms as well are struggling. I know a lot of um, farms and family farms who are, you, you know, they're touching the line on, on going into the red on, on some things. So, um, you know, not a joke really guys and girls. So yeah. It's gonna be quite interesting to see what happens in the next next three or four years. Um, there is a quote I had from Winston Churchill the other day, and it's absolutely brilliant. And it was, uh, never let a good crisis go to waste, Winston Churchill. And that is a brilliant quote there. And it's something which actually, um, if you take advantage of situations, uh, you can realize that there is actually an opportunity, I think, in a recession. It's just whether or not you can work out the opportunity. So. Be positive, stay positive. Um, I only read positive comments now. I don't read the negative ones. Um, so if, if you're gonna make a comment, make, make it positive and um, you know, try and help yourself and help others. That's, that's, uh, that's kind of like my motto, I guess, be positive. So, um, <laughs> and then what else have I got written on my list? Um, people have, have been asking about the new John Deere 6R 185 and whether or not we're gonna change the John Deere 6R, the 6155R, to the 185, I think this will be a really popular tractor for John Deere, and I think it could be a good bread and butter machine because it's like the replacement to the 6930 back in the day. It's got a lot of horsepower, 
well over 200 on boost from what, I, from what I've heard. So it could be a good tractor. I have sat in some of the new Shape 6Rs and I wasn't blown away, didn't really think they, they were that great, but I think I would like to have a, a drive of one, try it out on the farm and see what it's like. Um, they've, they've got completely new styling on them now and Command Pro joystick and green wing mirrors and yeah, they've kind of changed it a little bit and I think they've done away with the dashboard that's on a pillar now. Um, there's a few things they've changed, but they're pretty much the same as our 155. They're, they're not that different. So I'm not, you know, it'd have to be a radical change to change the tractor. It would have to be like, they'd bring something crazy out. Um, yeah, maybe I'll change my mind if I drove one, one of the new, new John Deere's, but anyway. Um, so if you remember a couple of years back, we had the Massey Ferguson 135, which is on the farm, the really old, obviously beaten up tractor, which has been here for years and years. Got that out, managed to use some of the social media income to pay for the restoration of that in partnership with Young's Tractor Restoration. And now it's done. And I'm, I've been thinking this year about what the next tractor will be. And I did say earlier on in the year that when I was down in France, uh, we saw the most amazing 7530 which was for sale and I really, really liked it a lot. Um, so I'd, I'd love to buy like a really old 7530, sort of, I don't know, anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 hours and really do it up well and get that rebuilt and do like a do like a 135 job on it but then actually use it at the end of the restoration. So that's, I get more excited, that's, that's what we're excited about at the moment, I get more excited about doing up old tractors than the new ones, if that makes sense, which is strange because I've always, you know, you've always liked looking at the, the latest tractors, but I just find them, the new tractors to be quite cold and quite boring, they're full of electrics, there's no emotion with them, no sound. I mean, those old 30 series back in the day sounded great, um, whereas the new R's, I don't think they sound as good, um, but that's just that's just one aspect, I guess, that's one, one thing, but the, I think as a whole package, I prefer the older tractors, and they're easy to fix, you can rebuild them, you can get parts for them easily, they're not that complicated, what more do you need? I, I tell you what I would need is 50k, 50k would be nice, which is, for anyone who doesn't know, not from farming, 30 miles an hour on the road, and air brakes would be quite handy if you're doing muck spreading with an 18 muck spread, ton muck spreader, and then you're going down the road, and it's, a car comes around the corner, you need to be able to stop a heavy load like that, so yeah, air brakes are pretty handy as well. I did, yeah, I did have a, an idea the other day actually about uh, if we ever bought this one th uh, 7530, did it up like brand new and then started using it, I'd love to do a muck spreading combo with a 7530 um, on a muck spreader and then R6155R with a front loader and an, ad an adapter plate and a muck grab loading the 7530 and it would free up the Manitou to work in the cow yard feeding the cattle because that's one problem we have when we're muck spreading is that I've always got to think about the Manitou going back to the yard feeding the cattle or it has to feed the cattle early in the morning but then it doesn't we don't get enough time to feed the animals and do the muck spreading all in one day it's like you need two machines for two different jobs so yeah that would be cool to do combo jobs with like 7.5 and a 6R and I, over time I'd just love to build like a, a small fleet of John Deere's kind of like old ones new ones just kind of like a little bit of everything and just that, that's my dream I'd love that I'd love that everyone always says like do you ever look at uh, New Holland or Massey Ferguson or other brands but to be honest, in the more modern classic era, there's nothing else really other than some of the old classic John Deere's and more recent John Deere's that I really like. But, um, 6480 Mas 64, Massey I like, and TM165 New Holland's. Um, so yeah, I do a lot of combo jobs with the 7530 and a, a 6R, the 615RR. Um, yeah, that would be that would be really cool. Um, another question I get asked a lot is farm vehicles. Um, you'll see we've got the old Defender on the farm. Man, I, I just love that Defender now. Um, it's a 2.2, it's a Puma, 2014. Just a year, a couple of years before they stopped making them forever. And uh, yeah, I absolutely adore it. It's got, I mean, it, it goes on the road really well. It drives like a van, because it's actually got a transit engine and a Volvo gearbox. Um, and it, and it's, it's great, it goes off road so well. I've never driven anything which can go across our marshes or tow cattle. Actually towing, I tell a lie, tow, it's not great at towing. Um, it, it really does struggle. I took the quad bike in the other day and took it home and it, the defender was kind of asking me like, please, this is too much. I need to just 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 take the trailer off. I just want to be rounding up cattle. Um, so yeah, it, it's not great at towing, I will be honest. But everything else, it is brilliant at. It's really, really good for, for off-road work. I don't think there's anything that, should, that can actually touch it off-road. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a good, it's a good farm vehicle and I absolutely adore it. And um, I know people take the mick out of them and they say that, uh, you know, defenders are unreliable, oh, that's going to fall apart and all the rest of it. But 
I just say, you know, good joke. At the end of the day, people who say that haven't got a Defender, they've probably got a pickup truck and they don't like them. So, you know, and, and I'd love to look at the pickup trucks one day. Maybe they're really good. But um, I do like that old Defender. I just, I don't know what it is. I know it's I know it's rubbish, but I like it. It's got some character, it's got some soul, which I appreciate. Um, and I do have actually on the farm, because I was thinking about getting like a pickup truck to do long distance journeys and tow trailers when the Defender's given up towing a trailer. Um, and I, I have got access to the new Discovery, the 2022 Discovery, and I take that out, I'll go on like long journeys or I'll, I'll go around if I have to go into the city for something. And that is great for like motorway driving and when I don't want to use the Defender for it, you know, because I took the Defender in a multi-story and I was doing Christmas shopping the other day and it just, it just didn't want to be there to be honest. So going up and down and it just, two, two, 2 2.2 meter height restrictions or whatever it was. And yeah, the Defender was like, take me back to the farm. It's got a, it's got a real personality, the Defender. I oh, just love it. Yeah, so the, the Discovery is really good. And yeah, maybe we'll look at a pickup truck in the future. Uh, new Defender looks cool. A lot of people have been asking about the new Defender. I did see one of those the other day. And um, they look cool, but actually to drive, I don't think they're that good for farm work. I think they're more suited for like, like I said about Discovery, kind of motorway journeys, long sort of long drives, going into town, things like that, doing your supermarket shopping. Um, I don't think they're really, again, don't think it's a farm vehicle really. And then going away from sort of farm vehicles and stuff for a while, we will come back to tractors and all that good stuff. Uh, we have got more work to do than ever before next year. Um, re recently, early on in the year, we acquired some more land and uh, it means that we're going to be even busier next year. And it's also allowed us, taking on another, uh, I believe it's 32 acres of land, will enable us to um, invest, hopefully, and spread the costs. We can, we can invest in some more equipment, which is quite exciting, sort of for next year or the next, next few years anyway. And uh, one thing which, you know, we, we do get asked a lot about is silage equipment. Why don't we make all of our own silage? And something which would be great would be a John Deere trailed mower conditioner. I was looking at a Coon trailed mower, but then actually my dad said that you'd be better off with a John Deere one because they're, they're solid or well made. And if you're about to sell it, you can sell John Deere. And also as well, it will obviously match the tractor, which would be quite cool as well. So I think that would be quite cool. A John Deere trailed mower to mow all of our own silage. Then we can tear it and then we can get a contractor to bale it. And then I've got my little wrapper in the shed, the Tanko wrapper. We've got, even got the silage equipment to handle the wrap bales. Uh, so yeah, that'd be pretty cool if we could do that. That's kind of like a little goal of mine. Uh, and then we have as well written down here, hedge cutter. Hedge cutters are awesome. Of course, one day in the future, that'd be brilliant to do our hedge cutting. I think this is like a long-term goal, way, way in the future. Um, because at the moment we've got for next year, the, the new shed to build. Give this video a thumbs up as well. We've got that new shed to build. And it would be awesome to have a fleet of John Deere's, to have like uh, an attachment on each tractor would be great. Uh, doing different tasks at this time of the year. Hedge cutting, muck spreading, muck carting, feeding, that sort of thing. And something else which is quite exciting, the other day I put, we were doing the video by the Fodderbeak clamp, we were putting all the straw on by hand, where I was, and uh, I asked about a demo, and we have got now uh, a feeder bed, a straw blower, coming on demo. So I won't tell you which one it is yet, it'll be a surprise, uh, but we're gonna have a go with one for a bit and see what it's like, uh, because that would also be awesome to have on the farm, um, especially when you know, I'm spending a lot of time feeding the calves milk powder, feeding everything by hand with nuts. You know, had the bed down by hand, it does just take up too much time in the day. And one of the biggest problems on the farm at the moment, as I'm sure a lot of people will know, is that getting labour is really expensive. So if you have to do all of the jobs manually and it's getting more, and the farm is getting bigger, you need to find a way to improve the efficiency. And uh, that's one thing which we're getting really excited about. So that'll be awesome. And uh, We'll have to put that on the 6R because that's obviously the only real big tractor we've got at the moment which could run a feeder better. Um, one thing, now I know a lot of people don't like new tractors, but one good thing about a, an AdBlue tractor, a modern tractor, is I think if you are in small buildings all day um, with the AdBlue system, it will hopefully not make the exhaust gases so toxic when you're in a shed. So I'm looking forward to see how the 6R copes in a shed with straw blower. That'll be quite interesting. Um, and it's all certainly got the power. I mean, it's got 195 horsepower. It'll probably tear the, tear the, tear the straw blower to bits. You have to tear, we'll have to turn it down on the, uh, on the PGA. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Make sure to give these videos a thumbs up. I hope it's given you a little bit of an update. And if you have got any questions, do drop them in the comments section down below. I will speak to you about the new shed, but that is gonna take about a long, long time. So uh, with that, do give this video a thumbs up, stay positive, keep liking, keep subscribing and all of that good stuff, and I will catch you on the next one. Click here to subscribe to the channel.
and click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video. Mm.